Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story promoting candidates that favor Beijing's views, scanning American political domains, even posing as U.S. voters online. A look at how Beijing tried to influence 2022 U.S. midterm elections. The first U.S. warship travels through the Taiwan Strait since the island's elections, setting the stage for a bipartisan U.S. delegation visit to Taiwan. More on their pledge for firm U.S. support in the face of Chinese aggression. A key figure in Beijing's global fox hunt campaign, expected to succeed the abruptly removed Xi Gan as China's next foreign minister. But who is Liu Jianchao? And amid a projected slump this year, Tesla CEO Elon Musk issues a warning, predicting that Chinese EV firms will demolish rivals without strong trade barriers. More on Musk's concerns. Retaliation against U.S. lawmakers promoting divisive content online and even impersonating American voters. A declassified report highlighting Beijing's efforts to influence America's 2022 midterm elections. The report comes from the Director of National Intelligence. The declassified document was published last December. It said during the 2022 U.S. elections, Chinese intelligence tried to undermine or promote candidates from both political parties. Examples include slandering a U.S. senator online using inauthentic accounts. The report also mentioned media reports of Chinese propaganda arm using TikTok to target candidates from both parties. Their content was able to rack up tens of millions of views in the U.S. The effort has been years in the making. Four years ago, Beijing ordered officials to ramp up efforts to influence U.S. policy and sway American public opinion in China's favor. The report assesses Chinese officials had more room to operate ahead of the midterms, probably because they didn't expect the Biden administration to retaliate as severely as feared in 2020. Congress is a prime target. The report said in 2021, Beijing identified lawmakers to either punish them for their anti-China views or reward them for supporting Beijing. Congress remains a thorn in the side of the Chinese regime. Beijing sees both chambers as the center of anti-CCP activities. Chinese cyber actors also scan over 100 U.S. state and national political party domains. A report from Microsoft found Chinese hackers posed as American voters online. They used artificial intelligence to promote divisive content during the 2022 midterm elections. Magnifying conflicts, promoting rifts, creating scandals targeting candidates, we look at Beijing's tactics of influencing Taiwan's presidential election. Its foreign minister warned Beijing has been using Taiwan as a testing ground. If successful, it will try to apply the tactics on other countries. Here's more. Taiwan has elected a new president, but interference from Beijing isn't stopping. The Chinese regime has continued to magnify conflicts in Taiwan using disinformation. And with the help of AI, it could be even harder to detect. That's according to a Taiwanese nonprofit focusing on enhancing digital defenses. It said before last December, Beijing used social media accounts to push controversial topics in Taiwan, such as the Me Too movement and political scandals involving members of the Democratic Progressive Party. It's the ruling party of Taiwan and a staunch defender of the island's self-governing status. The nonprofit said Beijing's goal is to deepen the rift in Taiwanese society. Then as the election neared, the regime spread rumors of then-presidential candidate William Lai saying he had a child out of wedlock. These stories sought to paint a bad picture of Lai. Other rumors claimed Taiwan would see its economy get worse if the DPP won a third term. Worth noting, China used fake social media accounts to generate and spread the claims. The nonprofit noted that it could be hard to detect this kind of disinformation going forward due to its being created and spread using AI. To discuss more about how Beijing interfered in U.S. elections, we sat down with Andrew Thornbrook, national security correspondent for the Epic Times. Andrew Thornbrook, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. 
Thanks so much for having me, Tiffany. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, the U.S. presidential election is in full swing after the Iowa caucuses in the first in the nation primary in New Hampshire. Now, one question that has come up repeatedly is the security and integrity of our elections. Now, in 2022, the Chinese regime actually interfered in the U.S. midterm elections. Tell us about that. Yeah, so this is something that we're coming to understand kind of bit by bit as more information comes out. We've had reports from private companies like Meta and Microsoft, and now in December, a, uh, a declassified assessment by the Director of National Intelligence, uh, sort of outlining how the Chinese Communist regime actively tried to influence uh, the midterm elections here, and this went across the political spectrum, right? What do you make of that bipartisan attack, if you will? Yeah, I think it really demonstrates, and the DNI report gets into this, that uh, the Chinese Communist Party has really seen the biggest threat in terms of the United States as coming from the legislative branch, right? We've seen increasing bipartisan support, particularly in you know the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party, to take action against the CCP and to sort of insulate the United States from the, the worst of its actions. And so I think that this really demonstrates that the regime understands Congress is going to be the biggest problem for it going forward and is trying to uh, get at that ahead of time. What is the Chinese regime's goal here? Why are they meddling in the U.S. elections? The Chinese Communist regime is really afraid that the U.S. will create laws to essentially dismantle the advantage it has against us, right? So. It's very easy for the regime to negatively impact us in a number of ways, economically, socially, particularly through social media and our online platforms, because we have a fairly open society. Uh, we have constitutional protections for freedom of trade, right, for freedom of speech, for all these sorts of things, regardless of where you come from. And so they're, they're going to try to continue to do these sorts of things so long as they can. And I think there is a real fear among the regime that the legislation is coming, right? Congress moves very slowly, as everyone knows, but everyone knows, I think, that uh, it's only going to get firmer against China. No, there's no one in Congress, virtually no one in Congress, saying we should be softer on China right now. Andrew Thornbrook, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. And more pressure expected from Beijing. A group of U.S. lawmakers is sending out a warning from a news conference in Taipei, saying they predict action from Beijing ahead of the upcoming inauguration of its president-elect. We anticipate over the next three months before the inauguration that we'll see Beijing choose to do some things. My message to Beijing is don't do that. You know, let's take a different path forward to maintain the status quo to maintain peace and prosperity in the region. But it's also important for everybody to know that the United States also stands with Taiwan. And that's why we decided to come here now. Alongside that message of support, the U.S. Navy sailed its first warship through the sensitive Taiwan Strait on Wednesday since the island's elections. That's as a congressional delegation set out to visit the island. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has more on the Pledge for Freedom of Navigation and the U.S. delegation's promise to Taiwan. The USS John Finn transited the Taiwan Strait Wednesday as a U.S. delegation met to reaffirm U.S. support after the island's democratic elections. The Navy said the destroyer's transit demonstrates the U.S.'s commitment to upholding freedom of navigation for all nations as a principle, stating no member of the international community should be intimidated or coerced into giving up their rights and freedoms. The Chinese regime accused the U.S. of trying to undermine peace and stability. Taiwan's defense ministry said it monitored the U.S. warship south through the strait, calling the situation normal. The U.S. Navy's last announced passage of a warship through the strait was in early November last year. It was joined by a Canadian frigate at the time. Leaders of the U.S. Congressional Taiwan Caucus visited Taipei Thursday, saying Taiwan can rest assured they have Washington's firm support. We are proud of the people of Taiwan. We are proud of the relationship. And as strong as that relationship has always been, rest assured, it will even be stronger. Taiwan's president-elect Lai Ching-de asked for continued U.S. support and deeper bilateral cooperation. 
I also hope that the two co-chairs and our friends in the U.S. Congress can continue to support Taiwan in bolstering its self-defense capabilities to jointly safeguard the peace and prosperity across the Taiwan Strait, as well as the region. The U.S. is Taiwan's most important international backer and arms seller. The Chinese regime views Taiwan as its own territory, despite never having ruled the island. It's threatening to use force to bring it under its control. Taiwan's defense ministry said it detected 18 Chinese Air Force planes operating around Taiwan last week in joint combat readiness patrols with Chinese warships, the first large-scale military activity since Taiwan's election. It is not the people of Taiwan or the people of the United States that have chosen to cha change the status quo. We see what is coming out of the PRC out of Beijing in their level of aggression, both here across the strait, but across the region. And as democracies, as people who believe in freedom, it is incumbent upon us to address those aggressions. Washington cut formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan in 1979, but U.S. law requires it to ensure the island has the means to defend itself and treat all outside threats with grave concern. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Predictions are in for Beijing's next foreign minister, and according to insider sources, one name has risen above all others. Liu Jianchao leads the Chinese Communist Party's international department. It usually handles relations with other communist nations like North Korea, and thus has noticeably less experience dealing with the White House than is typical for Beijing's chief diplomat. To combat that, he's taken a more active diplomatic role in the past half year. He's visited New York, Washington, and San Francisco this month alone, seemingly to prime him for future dealings with the U.S. and American business leaders. But Liu's visit to the U.S. caused quite a stir when he met with Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Human rights activists pointed to his leadership in Beijing's Operation Fox Hunt, a covert global operation to hunt down Chinese dissidents living overseas. The operation is notorious for setting up illegal Chinese police stations worldwide, including in New York City. In the meantime, Wang Yi has served as a temporary foreign minister. Liu is likely to formally take up the post this March during the Chinese state's legislative sessions. Elon Musk says Chinese car makers are on course to demolish Western rivals. The Tesla chief says that will be the outcome if trade barriers aren't imposed. His comments come as brands like China's BYD make inroads into global markets. The Chinese brand overtook Tesla as the biggest maker of electric vehicles in the final quarter of last year. It undercuts overseas rivals on prices and offers a wider range than many. Musk says Chinese firms like it are now the most competitive and he predicts they will have major success worldwide. Last year, Tesla began cutting prices in a bid to fight back. Musk says his company will also start production of a new model next year, with Reuters sources saying it will be cheaper than current cars. His latest comments come after Tesla reported slowing sales growth and adjusted earnings that fell short of analyst forecasts. But his calls for tariffs could fall on receptive ears. The EU is already weighing up whether to protect its car firms from Chinese rivals that Brussels says benefit from state aid. Meanwhile, US President Joe Biden has said he won't allow China to dominate the industry. And his expected rival in this year's presidential election, Donald Trump, has said he would increase tariffs on all imports. Tesla shares tumbled nearly 11 percent on Thursday after Musk warned sales growth would slow this year. President Biden winning his fight against House Republicans over EV charging stations. On Wednesday, he vetoed a bill so that federally funded EV charging stations can use imported iron and steel as long as they're assembled on U.S. soil. Adding more EV charging stations nationwide is a priority for the Biden administration. Survey shows many are hesitant to buy electric vehicles because charging stations are not as widespread. An infrastructure law passed in 2021 earmarked over $7 billion for building charging stations nationwide. But the law also requires that the stations built with federal money must use iron and steel produced in the U.S. The White House issued a waiver on that rule. 
But House Republicans and some Democrats fought back, introducing a bill to kill the waiver. They argue it hurts American companies and empowers China to control American energy infrastructure. China dominates the EV supply chain and is the world's top producer of iron and steel. The White House argues that if the waiver is killed, the administration would have to abide by what are known as Buy America rules from the 1980s. And that doesn't require domestic manufacturing for many goods. Next, we'd like to take a moment to share some of your comments about our show. We reported yesterday on an incident between a UK pianist and a group of Chinese nationals at a train station in London. The Chinese group asked him not to include them in video he was taking. It later escalated to a clash and local police stepped in. A viewer called TM1 took to our comments section to joke about what happened after the incident, writing, The CCP had the piano detained, but the piano is now out on bail. They went on to say the instrument isn't out of the woods yet and teased that, quote, The CCP ambassador in London has formally requested that the piano be extradited to China to face charges. Free the piano. While the piano wasn't detained, police did temporarily cordon off the instrument after the clash. After it was reopened to visitors, a group of people from Hong Kong were seen playing it to the tune of a song called Glory to Hong Kong. It's become a protest anthem for Hong Kong's pro-democracy movements against the CCP in recent years. Don't forget to tell us what you think of today's show. Thanks for watching. Coming up, the first wave of new recruits kicking off their one-year compulsory military service in Taiwan. More on details on islands' concerns and China's escalating military threat. And Washington's top diplomat just met with the Angola president. We look at how the White House plans to increase influence in Africa and competition with Beijing and Moscow. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than two years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus. Or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. The first wave of new recruits kicking off their one-year compulsory military service in Taiwan. More on details on islands' concerns and China's escalating military threat. And Washington's top diplomat just met with the Angola president. We look at how the White House plans to increase influence in Africa and competition with Beijing and Moscow. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.